Hello again everyone, here we go for the second of the beer blogs. Thank you very much for your kind comments and enthusiasm shown on the first. We're now going to go into the brew house and see how the brewer, with that combination of science and art, starts making this wonderful product, British beer. In front of us, what we haven't seen before, are some samples of different coloured malts, pale malt, crystal malt and roasted barley, which give different flavours and colours into beer. So we'll go brewing, shall we? Cheers. Here we are in the brew house of a small regional brewery. Look around at the vessels, they're modern and stainless, but they're all built to a traditional design. First stage in the brewing process, in preparation, is the milling of the malt. The malted barley from the maltster is crushed to a coarse flour. So when it goes into the first part, the mash tun, the brewer can readily extract the sugars he requires for the brew. The grain is crushed. Within this milled grist, the burtonizing salts have been added. The local water here at this brewery is quite soft. So the salts have been put into this, ready to go into the mash tun for the brew. This is where the process starts. The milled grist over here will be elevated up and the liquor will come from the hot liquor tank, come across temperature adjusted to a precise temperature and the two are mixed together in a porridge-like mixture here in the mash tun. Here we have the mash. The aroma is beautiful. It's that sweet, malty flavours that you know you're going to get some wonderful sweet words from. The temperature of the mash is absolutely crucial. And one of the things that's recorded on every brew is the mash temperature. Could be an indication, if you get this wrong, of problems later or perfection. One modern thermometer into the mash, and you're aiming for 64 degrees centigrade, plus or minus half a degree. A perfect brew is on its way. After it's stood here for about an hour and a half, allowing the enzymes, natural occurring enzymes, in the barley to convert the starch into sugars, what is formed is what the brewer calls the sweet wort, is drawn out from underneath the false floor, across and goes into the next vessel, the boiling vessel or the copper. At the same time, the brewer sprays or sparges hot liquor across the top of the mash tun washing out the sugars so you get the full extract from here. What we're extracting from the mash tun is what the brewers call sweet wort. Nice colour, full of sugars, very sweet, a fine malt extract. What we're going to do is transfer this sweet wort from the mash tun into this vessel, the copper. Here we have some golding hops, quite possibly from that same hop yard in Herefordshire. So collect the sweet wort into the copper, add the hops, and bring to the boil. And what's happening in here is three things. You sterilise it, because you're boiling for an hour and a half. Obviously you're extracting the flavours out from the hops. But the third one is the coagulation of the proteins that have been drawn out from the malted barley. Too much protein in beer gives you haze, problems. And in the same way that you hard boil an egg, you boil it and it goes hard, the same happens with the proteins here in the copper. After the hour and a half boil in the copper, the hop twirt is dropped by gravity into this vessel, the hop back. The hop back has a false floor, like the mash tun. That false floor acts like a colander, holds the hops back, and that layer of hops there acts as a fine filter and also holds back that coagulated protein that's come from the copper. But also we add fresh hops in here, which will soak into it in the same way that tea leaves soak in for a cup of tea, giving you that aroma of hops, which may have boiled off in the copper. From here, having circulated to make sure that it's nice and bright and clean, this hopped work goes to the heat exchanger and then onwards to the fermenting vessels. The hop towards in the hop back is at about 90 degrees centigrade and needs to be chilled down to 19 before we put the yeast in. It goes through a heat exchanger to achieve this. Cold water goes in one side, 
the hot wort and the other, and they pass each other and exchange heat. The cooled wort goes on to the fermenting vessels, and the hot water goes back to the hot liquor tank, ready for the next brew. At the same time, a small amount of oxygen is gently bubbled into the wort to encourage that initial bit of yeast growth before the real fermentation takes place. The very hot, hoppy wort will contain proteins in solution which will fall out of solution when it's chilled down. Here's a sample from previous brew and that proteinaceous matter you don't want has settled out but what you've really got is nice lovely bright clear worts ready for the fermentation heading towards the final product. So that's the brew house. You've seen how the brewer with these combinations of science and art takes those raw materials and makes fine worts ready to go to the fermenting room. Next month we're going into the fermenting room, but more importantly we're going to see cask racking as well and what makes British cask conditioned beer so unique. Cheers to next month. See you there.